Hi everyone, my name is Sébastien Lagré. I'm today here with Hanna. We're gonna do a 50 minute full body workout on the Evo. You can do this workout on the micro or on the Mega 2. Uh, you might have to adapt the spring, of course, and then some of the movement. Um, let's go. Go ahead, Christian, hit the video. Perfect, so now we're gonna start with the icebreaker. So for the icebreaker, we're gonna have one black and one red spring or if you're on the mega, one yellow, one red. You're gonna place your hands on the handles, keeping the shoulders in the sockets, arms are straight, the elbows are slightly bent so that the triceps really does all the work. You're gonna isolate your hips so that the hips are not moving back and forth, and you're gonna basically push your carriage, pressing from the knees only. And Anna is doing a fantastic job over here because she's not moving the upper body, she's really pressing from the lower body. When you do this exercise, you should feel this in your shoulders, in your triceps, chest, a little bit of the lats, and then of course the quads. This is a great exercise to warm up the body. Uh, Hannah, how's the uh, red and black here, good? Okay. So we have a red and a black spring. This is a pushing exercise on the front of the Evo. If you want to add more tension, if you're a guy out there, you probably could do two red spring, but remember that you want to be able to endure the entire duration of the set, right? So if you put two right spring and it can only do uh, 30 seconds, then that's too much tension. All right, in five seconds, we're going to keep the same spring load. We're going to turn around and we're going to go into the mega donkey kick right leg. So go ahead and bring the carriage back in, turn around, place your left knee on number six, Hands on the handles, yep, right foot on the handle, and then slowly press the carriage out. Beautiful, just like that, yes. So when you do this exercise, you're gonna keep your hips directly behind the shoulders. So when you look from the top, your torso is like a rectangle. And that rectangle is perpendicular, sorry, it's parallel and aligned to the carriage. So pretend that the shoulders represent the two corners of the carriage on the front and that your hips represent the two corners of the carriage on the back. You're gonna slowly press the carriage, pressing from the right leg. Four counts on the way out, four counts on the way in. If you guys have taken my class at the Megaformer Studio in West Hollywood last Sunday, this is a routine that I taught, and that's pretty much a very similar routine that I will teach in a couple days from now at the same place. So go out for four counts, in for four counts. So out, one, out, two, out, three, out, four, in, one, in, two, in, three, in, four. Beautiful, nice, slow uh, contraction. And remember to keep the muscle engaged the entire time. So when you do this exercise, it's very important to not lock the knee when you push the carriage out. You have to keep that leg slightly bent and to not bring the carriage all the way in and kind of rest there. You are supposed to constantly fire those muscle fibers. Good. So we have about 10 more seconds. And then we're gonna go into the next exercise, which is the skating, with the left foot on the platform in five, four, three, two, perfect. Bring the carriage in, step up on the platform, right foot on the carriage, yep, facing uh, the sign. And then when you do the skating, what I want you to do is, again, to keep the weight equal, okay, equally distributed between your left and your right side. I don't want all the weight to be on the left, or I don't want all the way to be on the right. I want the weight to be centered. You're gonna bend both legs and then try to bend the legs as much as possible. Try to maintain that low profile. So while you keep the left leg bent, you are slowly pressing the carriage out laterally with your right leg for four counts. So out, one, out, two, out, three, out, four, and in one slow, in, two slow, in, three slow, in, four. Slowly out, slowly in. Be able to time the muscle contraction is also another benefit of the method. 
because you really have to think and the more you think about the movement as you do the movement the more neural pathways you create and the more neural pathways you create around the muscles the more body awareness the more body awareness you have the more you can start to muscle target the more you can target certain areas of the body so this is about really feeling the movement right as you do this exercise you want to keep breathing very important now keep both legs bent hold it halfway stay in that position and now we go into a pulse so if you guys have watched enough of these videos, you'll see that, you know, I always do the same thing here. I'll match a dynamic movement with a isometric hold. Well, this is not a pure isometric hold on this one, but now we stop moving the carriage. So the carriage is moving back and forth for a minute and 15 seconds. And now we're going to hold it in place. And now we're going to dip. Basically, we're going to squat, holding the carriage in place. And that's really what the... Um, uh, the mic, uh, the, the the pulse, the skating pulse is. It's really kind of a squat. Good. Try to go a little deeper though. Yeah, that's it. Poor Hannah, she's been here already a couple of hours. We shot two 25 minute workout before this. And it taps, it really does. For you at home watching this, if you've never been on the Mega or an Evo or Micro, and you think this is really easy, try to do this for the minute against the tension. It's, it's quite challenging. All right, on the next one, we're gonna go to the runner's lunge. Bring the carriage in. We'll do runner's lunge, right leg. So keep your hands on the bar. Keep your right foot forward, left foot on the handle. Yeah, beautiful, excellent. So I love the runner's lunge. It's one of my favorite lunge. You can actually, when you do this one though, you really want to line up the, the right hip with the right knee. Now, if you want to, you can have you keep your hands on the bar or you can even try to put your hands on the platform to go into a deeper position. Oh yeah, like that. So the advantage of going deeper here is that you're forcing the right hip to be right behind the right knee. And that's kind of what I'm looking for when you do a lunge or a leg exercise. I'm looking for that 90 degree angle in that knee. I call this the golden angle because it is at that point that you fully optimize the integration of the glutes, hamstrings, inner thighs, outer thighs, quads. Every muscles of your legs come together at that angle. So it's a very important angle. We have about 25 more seconds. And then, as you can probably imagine, we're going to hold it and do a quick set of pulse. And when I say a quick set, it's a minute. Oh, yeah. Feel that? Nice. Hannah is uh, suffering in silence right now. She's also cursing me, but I can hear that in my head. Now, bend, 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 bend that leg a little bit more. That's it. So remember, this exercise, as you get tired, your body wants to come up and stand up because it is stronger in that position but you have to mentally keep it at that angle. All right, now keep both legs bent. Keep the left knee right underneath the left hip and now go into a quick set of pulse. Perfect, go up and down. Beautiful, that's it. But I want you to go a little deeper now. There you go, perfect. Nice, Anna, beautiful. That's it, go a little deeper, a little deeper, perfect. So when we pulse over here, yes, we're working the back of the right leg. We're not working that left leg. Beautiful. If you see Hannah from the back, hips are right behind the shoulder. Beautiful form over here. There's no uh, weird shape with the hips or uh, ribs or shoulders. Everything is nice and aligned, and the torso should be perpendicular. All right, 10 more seconds, and then we're going to go from the runner's position back to the skating, and you see my position right here? Boom, very quick. Um, in five four, three, two, bring the carriage in and go right into that exercise. Perfect. So when you do Legree, it's a muscular endurance workout, but the movement themselves are done very slowly and with control. And actually the slower you go, the more strengthening, tightening and toning benefits. So the slower, the better, but you do not want any rest between the slow movements. So you do a minute of a movement, and right after that, you want to do a minute of the next movement, and you keep this going, 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 just like as if you went for a run or a jog. You don't want to keep stopping every minute. You want to keep the workout going. But the movement themselves have to be done very slowly and with a lot of control, which is more difficult than doing a lot of explosive movements. Go ahead, bend that leg a little bit more. Keep the right leg bent. There you go. Bend, 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 bend and then drop those hips for me. There you go, a little bit more, a little bit more. There you go. Each repetition, you try to lower the hips, 
to the level of the knees. Remember that we want to be at the golden angle position. Try to go a little deeper if you can. Deeper, you feel that? Good. So the deeper you go, the more glutes and outer thighs you'll feel. All right, about 10 more seconds. And of course, sometimes you have to shake a little bit. That's fine. Uh, remember that because it is a muscular endurance workout that you really have to focus on the breathing. You have to breathe constantly. And the pace should be very similar as if you went for a jog. So you're constantly breathing fast, right? Now go ahead and keep both legs bent. Hold the carriage in position and go into your squats. Uh, micro pulse. There you go. Woo! And then go a little deeper though. Yes. And I can see the shakes right over here already. Good. So when you do the degree workout, I prize myself on the three S's. No, not Sebastian, Sebastian, and Sebastian. No. We're talking about the three important S that everyone wants from every workout. Well, maybe not everyone, but most people. They want to shake, they want to sweat, and they want to get sore. This is the guarantee that when you take a class with us, you are going to feel the shake, you will get sweaty, and you will definitely feel sore, okay? Uh, the Megaformer and the Evo get sore like nothing else because you get very deep soreness because you're not only working the extrinsic muscles, you're working extrinsic and intrinsic muscles, so very deep burn. All right, on the next one, we're going to shift gear. We're going to go to the super lunge, right leg. I'm so sorry, Anna. I forgot to put the, <laughs> the super lunge. Oh, my God, I'm so sorry. Uh, we're going to put a red. So we're going to have two red and two black spring. Super lunge. You're going to grab the handles. You're going to place the right foot on 10. Yes. And I want the left foot to be anchored on the bar over here. Yes, that's it. And then slowly, you're going to pull yourself up. There you go. Perfect. Now, I don't know if you can see over here. Maybe Christian, you can do me a favor if you want to. Can you zoom in in that position, the foot over here? So whenever you take a class, very important to anchor your foot. Look at the toes on the bar over here, okay? Anna is not putting her foot inside the hole. She has her toes wrapped up around the edge. That gives perfect support for the ankle. So now she has a traction to do the exercise. A lot of people put the foot flat on the pad. Do not do that when you do the super lunge. You should always have traction, very important. So we're gonna bend both legs. As you go down, you're gonna extend both arms. As you come up, you're gonna pull on both arms. Uh, Anna has give you a perfect, uh, really superb demonstration right now of the super lunge. On the next one, you're gonna hold it halfway. Bend your elbows, and then go into the pulse. There you go, perfect. And again, for the pulse, you can see, a little flexion right there, working the back of the right leg. But at home, you can see that she never lets go of that leg. That leg is constantly working for the full minute. Try to bring the left knee even closer. Bring the elbows in a little bit more. Oh, yeah. That's it. Go a little deeper. That's it. Perfect. And don't forget to breathe. Excellent. Nice. So when you do the super lunge over here, you have over 600 muscles working together. And that's what I like about working out on the Mega and the Evo it integrates every muscle parts together in one movement. 10 more seconds. And then we're gonna start to do the entire sequence with the left leg on the opposite side. In five, four, three, two, excellent. Drop the handles. We're gonna go back to one red, one black. Uh, mega donkey kick. So keep the right knee on number six. Put your left heel on the handle. And as soon as you're ready, go for it. Now, when I do my virtual classes, I give everybody, uh, sorry, I put in my, uh, in my script a 15 seconds break to go from one transition to the next. That is only because it is a virtual class. When I teach a class, a physical class in class, right in the studio, I give no transition time. I want people to move from one exercise to the next. All right? So, don't think the 15 second transition here is uh, uh, what would normally happen. You do not want any transition. At home, if you can move very quickly from one exercise to the next, perfect. Do not wait, start to do the exercise. Nice, perfect. 
So when you do the mega donkey kick, really, this is an exercise where you're going to grab the carriage with both hands. You should feel the triceps. You should feel the shoulders, the chest, the lats, the glutes. Every muscle here are pretty much working, either pushing the carriage or stabilizing the rest of the body while you push the carriage with the left leg. So I don't want you to isolate or I don't want you to mentally isolate or mentally focus just on the left leg. When you do this movement, I want you to be aware of your left leg. I want you to be aware of the right leg. I want you to be aware of your arms. I want you to be aware of your entire body. Good. Nice. 25 more seconds. Excellent. And then we're gonna go into the skating with the right foot on the platform. Coming up in 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two. All right, bring the carriage in. We're gonna keep the same springs. So right foot on the platform, left foot on the carriage. Bend your legs, take your butt out. Keep the right leg bent and then slowly press the carriage out with the left leg. Go out, one, out, two, out, three, out, four, and in, one, in, two, in, three, in, four. Perfect. Excellent. Go ahead and bend the legs a bit more for me. Oh, a little bit more. There you go. Feeling the glutes and hamstring. Perfect. Yes. Slow control, continuous, constant tension. Beautiful. Yes. 40 more seconds. And when you do this exercise, you know, I want you to mentally focus on pushing the heels down and out, right? It's just kind of that motion, you go down and out, and that's what you're pushing. And if you have the motion of pushing down and out, you're working both sides of the glutes, and you're working the totality of the glutes, not just one area of it. Nice, beautiful. Bend, bend, bend the legs. How are we doing over here, good? Yes? All right, 10 more seconds, and you're gonna hold it halfway, and then we're gonna go into our pulse. In five, four, three, two, hold it, and pulse, up and down, beautiful, excellent. And try to go a little deeper. Oh yeah, a little deeper. Now when I do a pulse, it doesn't have to be a quick movement, right? A pulse is a micro movement, it is up to you. If you want to have a fast movement or a slow movement, I like how she's doing it, where it's a little deeper and more thought out, more control, a bit more focus. Good. Again, when you do this exercise, the carriage is not supposed to move, and you want to keep all the weight on the heels. Oh, yeah, it's burning. Woo! I almost feel sorry, but, but because. But because I'm a teacher, you know, I, I can't quite feel completely sorry, you know. All right, 10 more seconds. And then we're going to go into the runner's lunge, left leg, in 10 seconds. Good. So again, here with all this exercise, right, with the uh, mega donkey kick, the skating, uh, runner's lunge, uh, the super lunge, working the same muscles over and over and over and over. Bring the carriage in, and let's go into the runner's lunge, left leg. So left foot is on one, yep, and then right foot goes on the pad. You're gonna bend the left leg. Again, here, what I'm looking for is that perfect alignment. I want the left knee to be right above the left ankle. You're gonna drop the left hip for me. More. You're gonna grab those handles, yes, there you go. And then keep the hips right behind the shoulders. And then slowly press the carriage out with the right leg. Good, keep that left knee right above the left ankle. Drop the hips a little bit more for me, yes, and then move the right knee back and forth. Beautiful, keeping the shoulders in the sockets. Excellent. So slowly pressing the carriage out with the right leg, keeping that left leg bent. Nice, good job. Now, another benefit of moving the carriage very slowly, it gives you time to really think about what you're doing, and again, I think, that's a, I think that's a very um, important element of a workout is to really be able to focus, really just forget about the outside world for a minute and then just put yourself inside your body 
check your body. How am I feeling today? Feel the left foot, feel the left knee, feel the left calves, feel the right inner thighs, feel the right glutes, feel the obliques, feel the lower back, feel the shoulders, the triceps, the chest, feel all these muscles working together in this one movement. Now hold it halfway, keep that right knee right underneath the right hip, and now just pulse up and down, perfect. Again, when we do the pulse, the pulse is a micro movement. You don't have time to go all the way up, all the way down. And essentially, just like Hannah, you wanna keep the hips really around that golden angle position, right? We wanna keep that 90 degree angle hold there. Nice, there you go, excellent. If you look at the avatar on the, uh, I think, right side of your screen, you'll see that the avatar is barely moving and it's almost kind of staying in that one position. Good, 20 seconds left. We have now 30 minutes left, so already 20 minutes gone. See how it goes, how, how fast it goes? It's amazing, you know, amazing how time flies when you have so much fun. Good. All right, in five seconds, we're gonna go into skating left one more time. Oh, I forgot, we did four sets of skating today. Bring the carriage in, rotate to your right, left foot on the platform, right foot on the carriage, and skating, excellent. Oh, yeah, feel the sweat? Nice, you're welcome, yes. So when I construct my routines, sometimes I'll do one exercise and never do it again in that routine, or sometimes I do repeat. It really depends on the class. It's okay to repeat blocks of exercise. Sometimes it's actually uh, um, more efficient. Uh, on this one routine today, I did four sets of, of skatings. So that's really eight minutes of skating. It's a long time. Uh, I love the skating. I think it's a, it's a great movement. Uh, one of the probably one of the best exercises really to shape uh, glutes, outer thighs, uh, even hamstrings. Skating is a great exercise also that guys like to do. You know, sometimes when you do exercise, you have both men and women, they kind of want different things. So I really focus on the elements that both genders like. 25 more seconds. Moving the carriage back and forth. The fly is back. Amazing. And the fly is on your ass right now. Yeah. Bend, 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 bend the legs. Keep going there. You go try to go a little deeper. Beautiful. 10 more seconds. Good, Hannah. Don't forget to breathe. Go a little deeper, please. A little deeper, 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 deeper. There you go. Hold it there. Beautiful. Five more seconds. You're going to hold it. And then we're going to go into the pulse in five, four, three, two. Hold it and pulse up and down. Perfect. Again, when you pulse, it doesn't have to be a quick movement. Sometimes it's better to slow down the movement just to make sure that you don't move the carriage and that you're keeping your strength balanced, right? This is not a left leg exercise. This is not the right leg exercise. Both legs are working in that one movement. 35 more seconds. And then we're gonna go back into super lunge. So that first 30 minutes of the class doing legs, it's pretty intense because we're, using, we're only doing pushing exercise. So it's a pretty uh, intense beginning. Now, I don't always do pushing exercise at first. I usually do a, a mix of pushing and pulling exercise. But today, pushing exercise only. Five, four, three, two. And now, we're gonna go back to the super lunge. We're gonna put two red, two black. That's it. You're gonna grab the handles. And then you're gonna put your left foot on 10. Anchor your right foot on the bar, yep. And as soon as your right foot is anchored, you're gonna pull on the handles and bring the handles to the, uh, the ribs. And then slowly lower yourself down, perfect. So when you do this movement, it's four counts on the way up, four counts on the way down. So down one, down two, down three, down four, up one, up two, up three, up four, down one, down two, down three, down four. Beautiful, slow, controlled, continuous, constant tension and pull on those handles. Beautiful, keep your chin up, shoulders back. Nice, excellent. 30 more seconds. And then we'll go into a pulse after that. Nice, good job. You feel that? Oh yeah. So when you do your workout on the Mega or the Evo, you can do 
40, 50, one hour of leg if you want to. You can really decide what you want. I like to do half of the workout with the legs because this is when you're going to get the greatest anabolic and metabolic stimulation is when you work the lower part of your body. On the next one, hold it. Bring your hands in and then go into a pulse. There you go. Up and down. Perfect. Go up and down. Up. Oh, yeah. Up. Perfect. Up. Go a little deeper. Up. Nice. Up. Woo. Up. Perfect. Up. 40 more seconds. Up. Yes. Up. Really focusing on the back of the left leg. Holding your abs in. Pulling the hands to the chest. And then hold it there for your life, right? Come on. You got 25 more seconds. Easy. Keep your chin up. Perfect. And we have the 80s music, too. There you go. That's it. Come on. Bring your hands right here to the ribs. Beautiful. 15 more seconds. Love it. Oh, then after that, we have scrambled eggs coming up in five. Yes. Four. Three. Two. All right. On your right knee, we're going to remove the two red spring. Keep the two black spring. We'll do scrambled eggs. Left side. So we're going to position the right knee on number six on the carriage. Hana is going to put a left or hands on the bar on the Evo. And now slowly swing the left leg down to the floor and then back up. Now when you do the scrambled eggs, I often do the scrambled eggs as a bridge between the upper to lower or lower to upper body. The scrambled eggs is a core exercise, pretty much like everything else we did so far. The way you do it, you want to keep your hips right behind the shoulders. You want to keep your trunk stable like a rectangle. When you look at the avatar uh, on the right screen, you can see that basically the torso is like a rectangle and you try to align the edge of your rectangle with the rectangle from the carriage. That's how you know you do the scrambled eggs. Here we have basically the torso not moving, just pulling the carriage with the action of the left leg. So we are separating the left leg with the rest of the body. You want to grab the bar so you can feel the triceps, shoulders, chest, and lats. And you're also going to feel the obliques highly active in that exercise. In about 10 seconds, Anna is going to anchor her right foot against the bar. She's going to lift the right knee off the carriage, and we're going to go into the flying scrambled eggs. So for those of you who are taking my class on Sunday at the Megaformer Studio, make sure to watch this one. Go ahead, lift your right knee up now. There you go, and then kick the left leg, perfect. And what you wanna do, you wanna keep your toes right there, and then right on the edge, perfect. Now lift your left knee, right knee, there you go, perfect, that's it. So right here, you can see the anchoring. Your, uh, your toes are grabbing basically a hard edge or the edge of one of the opening on the carriage. Go ahead and drop the right knee down for me a little bit more. Oh, that's it. Yes, there you go. You want the right knee it basically to be just a couple inches off the pad. Nice. You got it. You feel that? So when you do the flying scrambled eggs, you are working over 650 muscles together. 650 muscles together. Scrambled eggs is a phenomenal core exercise. All right. On the next one, we're going to go into the kneeling torso twist in five, four, three, two, beautiful. Drop that handle, grab the other one, and then you're going to add another black spring, please. So you have three black spring. Good. You're going to be on your knees, and you're going to stand on your knees, actually. Stand on your knees with your feet against the, uh, the ring of fire. You're going to interlock your fingers, and then slowly rotate out to the right. So when you do the kneeling torso twist, what you want to do is you want to align your hips with basically the edge of the carriage. You do not want the hips to turn. And that's why it's important to push on the bar so that the hips do not turn. Your ribs are turning, but not your hips. So when you turn your ribs around your hips, that's when you contract the obliques. That's when you force the obliques to engage and turn. Otherwise, you're turning from the shoulders and you're stabilizing from the obliques. Here, I want you to stabilize with the shoulders and stabilize and turn with the obliques, if that makes sense. If you do this right, you're going to feel the left side over here completely engage. 20 more seconds, and then we're going to go into the leaning torso twist 
where her whole body is going to lean forward. Good. Seven more seconds. Five, four, three, two. Lean forward. That's it. Beautiful. And again, maybe here if you can get a, a side profile of Hannah, and you're going to see how she's kind of leaning forward now. And if you do this exercise right, you're going to feel this in your glutes, hamstrings, and calves. Yes. Because now you are engaging or you are integrating your lower body in the upper body uh, with, the lower, uh, with the upper body. And this is now becoming a core-centric movement, right? You are absolutely pulling, you're generating uh, the force, right? The movement comes from your abs, from your obliques, but the rest of the body is also working with this movement. 20 more seconds. Beautiful. And then we're going to go into the French twist, left side. So today the, uh, the routine is this, 30 minutes of heavy pushing leg and about, I think, 20 minutes of obliques, and I think we have 10 minutes of arms, something like that. Anyways, 50 minutes. Five, four, three, two. We're going to drop the handle, go back to one black spring only. Yep. Bring the carriage out. And now we'll do French twist for the left side. So Hannah is going to put her feet on the carriage. No, you had it. Yep. Left side. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. So hands on the handles. Right foot in the back, left foot in the front. Uh, we're going to keep the shoulders away from the ears so there's a nice open space in the neck. That doesn't move. And then basically moving the carriage back and forth, pulling from the left side of the body, so folding, unfolding the left side. And pretend that your tailbone is attached to a cable and that the cable is going straight up to the skies and then really pulling from that left side. Nice. So this routine is very clean because we did the first three exercises for the right side with the scrambled eggs, flying scrambled eggs, right? then kneeling and leaning towards the twist, then French twist. Usually I'll do something more creative and then do this exercise kind of backward for the other side. But in 20 seconds, what we're gonna do is we'll do a reverse catfish to recenter ourselves, and now we'll do the exact same sequence on the right side. We'll do scrambled eggs, flying scrambled eggs, kneeling towards the twist, leaning towards the twist, French twist, right side. In five, four, three, Two, stay in that position, reverse catfish. So now, keeping the hands on the, uh, on the handles, really lifting the heels as much as possible, keeping as little contact as possible with your feet. And this is called the reverse catfish. Now, Hannah over here has a different grip. She likes to invert her hands like that. It's totally fine with me. Whatever is more comfortable on your wrist, on your elbows, on your shoulders, I have no qualms about that. All right, so we do the reverse catfish. We have a minute left. Hannah, how you feel? Good? You, you, you're surviving? Spicy, I like that. Yes, yeah, the workout on the micro, the workout on the mega, the workout on the Evo, the workout on the Supra, definitely spicy. And then if you look at the avatar over here, you can see that basically your torso remains in a tabletop neutral position. You are not moving your torso as you move the carriage back and forth. 30 more seconds. Pulling the knees to your chest. Nice. Good. So keeping the arms slightly bent, working triceps, shoulders, chest, lats, abs. Perfect. Nine more seconds. And then we're going to go back to two black spring or two yellow, two light spring, and then go into the scrambled eggs right side. In five, four, three, two, beautiful. Bring the carriage back in. Nice. Now we have two black springs. Go ahead and grab the foot strap on the right side. We're going to place our left knee on number six, hands on the carriage, keeping the foot strap around the right foot and then slowly kicking the right leg up. Nice. Now what Hannah is doing fantastic over here, and again, I don't have the body cam to show you today, but her body is not moving, only the right leg. A lot of people, when they do this exercise, when they move the right leg up and down, it causes a shift in the hips. 
So as they bring the right leg up, they'll start to shift the hips to the left. Do not do that. Never do that. And if you take a class where they tell you to do this, it's absolutely wrong, okay? Your torso is not supposed to move. A lot of exercises in the GRI are actually the, um, the muscles that you're working is actually not the moving muscles. It's the stabilizing muscles. If you look at skating, if you look at uh, uh, mega donkey kick, scrambled eggs, another one, right? We're actually focusing on the rest of the body. It's easy to move that right leg up and down. Anyone can do it. That's not the exercise. It's much more difficult to move the right leg up and down, but to keep your body in that still, perfectly aligned position. That's the scrambled eggs. Now go ahead and lift the left knee off the carriage. So when you go into the flying scrambled eggs, it is way more difficult to maintain that position as you kick the right leg up. But if you are able to do this, then that becomes the ultimate core exercise. Everything is core about this one. Yes. So the way to do the flying scrambled eggs the first time is much easier to do on the Evo, by the way, than any of the Megas because the Evo has this round bar that goes around the carriage. I call this the ring of fire. It's the ring of fire because it really makes you, your, your muscles, it gives you more traction. And because it gives you more traction, it gives you mu more muscular uh, contraction. And uh, it's, uh, you burn more, basically, because of that bar, the design of that. So if you guys out there looking for uh, a Mega or Evo, I highly recommend the Evo. And the Ring of Fire is, uh, I put it on the Micro, I'm putting it on the Mini, the Mini Pro. Evo 2, all the new machines coming out all have that Ring of Fire. It's the best thing. All right, now in five seconds, you're gonna go to the kneeling torso twist right side. So drop the foot strap. We're gonna add one more black spring. And now kneeling torso twist right side. So now, Hannah is gonna kneel on the carriage. She's gonna put both feet against the bar. So now you can see how she's pushing against the feet. So if you take a class uh, on the Megaformer M3S, the M3, M3S, M3K, M3X, they all have a bar. Uh, the M3K and the M3X has a longer bar that reach all the way, almost all the way around uh, the side. The reason we have that bar is to support your body in exercises like this one. So here you want to push against the bar with your feet so that the hips don't move. So I don't want to see the hips turning. When Anna is turning to the left, her hips are not turning. And what happens, I can see those lines on the right side. Now she's actively uh, rotating from the obliques, not from the hips or not from the shoulders. The only way to achieve that is by having your feet against the bar and then really pushing against the bar. Holding the stomach in, lifting the chest up, and then slowly rotating out. Beautiful. Also, in 10 seconds, we're gonna go into the leaning torso twist. So the leaning torso twist is the more core-centric version of the kneeling torso twist. In five, four, three, two, one. Leaning forward, beautiful. Now you can see how she's in a perfect alignment. The glutes, the hamstrings, the calves are also working because she's using those muscles to gain leverage at that angle, if that makes sense. Now when you do the leaning torso twist, you should feel this in your calves, in your hamstrings, in your glutes, in your obliques. You're gonna feel this in your transverse, you're gonna feel this in your lower abs. And of course, you're gonna feel the shoulders. If you start feeling the shoulders too much, what you can do, you can reduce the uh, stress by bringing the elbows in and then kind of bracing your ribs with your elbows. And that becomes a much easier movement to do with your upper body. But do not lose sight of the rest of the body and then keep that body perfectly aligned. 10 more seconds. Oh, we didn't go over here, good? Yes, guess what, you have 12 minutes left. Unbelievable, having so much fun. Listening to me speak for 15 minutes, amazing. Five. Four, three, two, lose the handle. Go back to one black spring, so one light spring. French twist, right side. So you're gonna pull the carriage to the back, put the hands on the handles, feet on the carriage, right foot in the back, left foot in the front. And now we're gonna slowly, so remember for this exercise, I want you to keep the shoulders clear from the ears. I want a nice open space in the cervicals, right in your neck feet, you have the left foot behind the right foot, feet are perfectly aligned, and now we're folding, unfolding the right side of the body. We have about 11 minutes left, fantastic. 
And then remember that when you do these movements, you constantly breathe. Very important. Do not hold your breath. Good. So after this one, we're going to change uh, speed a little bit. And like I said before, um, we did about, I think, maybe 25 minutes of legs. I think we did about 15 minutes of obliques. And now we'll do 10 minutes of uh, upper body. But remember that you do, the, you do work the upper body when you do certain movements of the legs and also um, when you do the, uh, the obliques. So eight more seconds. And then we're going to go into the chest opener. One of my favorite exercises for the chest because I have a round back from bodybuilding for all these years of kind of rounding my back, you know. Uh, so the chest opener is a great way to compensate. Five, four, three, two. Bring the carriage all the way in. We're going to put um, two black springs. Uh, maybe another one. Yeah, three. And then we're going to bring the carriage further in. There you go. All right, so you're going to sit on your knees and heels, chin up, back straight, and then slowly open that chest. There you go, perfect. When you do the chest opener, I want to see the shoulder blades bring, coming together. And what I want to see is that chest over here just opening up, rolling the shoulders back, right? So when you do this exercise, you're going to open the chest, right? You pull the shoulders back and you're opening up the chest over here, that whole space, right? That's it. So bring your chest out and then try to rotate the shoulders back a little bit more. So we're not doing this where you pull the arms back, you rotate and you bring the shoulders out and back and it's opening up and lifting up the chest. On the next one, we're going to go into sexy back coming up in 15 seconds. Hannah, how are we doing over here? Good? Are you happy that now we're only on doing arms? Do you have concerns? Yeah. She doesn't trust me. And she shouldn't. On the next one, go ahead, lean forward, go into the sexy back. Perfect. So perfect position right there. I'll clear the shot for you guys. And what I like about Hannah's position right now, she's got that perfect uh, 90 degree angle in her hips. Sorry guys, we have a fly that just came in. Uh, I wonder if it's the same fly for every workout. It can be because I think they only live, live for 24 hours, but definitely a, a relative of the earlier flies that were here last week, the week before that, ever since we've been here, basically. I don't know where there's another generation. This is probably the 50th generation or the 60th generation of fly. Uh, it's very annoying because they go everywhere. It's very annoying when you have also, when you sweat and then you have this fly that kind of linger on your, on your skin. Very disgusting. All right, shoulder blades together. What Hannah is doing over here, she's not moving her elbows. Her elbows are literally still in space. And that's very important because that way you can really focus on and concentrate on the action of the triceps. But here you're not only working the triceps because you're moving the carriage back and forth. So your abs are working, your lower back is working. So again, because of the back and forth of the carriage, and we are integrating the triceps with the rest of the body. If she was doing the same exercise on the floor, she would be isolating the triceps. But because she's doing the same exercise on the carriage and the carriage is moving back and forth, she's working, she's integrating the triceps with the rest of the body, which is much healthier for your, uh, for your body. In five seconds, we're gonna turn around. We're gonna go into the kneeling tricep extension overhead. We're gonna remove one spring. So go ahead, bring the carriage in, turn around. But make sure the carriage goes all the way in, yeah. There you go. So when you have the super fast spring connection, you can change springs while the carriage is in motion. But the spring won't be engaged until you bring the carriage all the way in because we have little magnets inside that basically pull the springs for you. So you can select the spring you want, but you have to bring the carriage all the way in and then immediately the uh, spring takes effect. All right, so for this exercise, we're gonna keep the back in a completely perpendicular position, keeping the elbows right above the shoulders. But we want to try to keep the arms lined up with the ears and then keep the arms lined up with the ears as you extend the arms up and down. And this one, you're going to feel the triceps even more. Feel that? Yes. If this feels like too much tension, 
all you have to do is scoot back a little bit. And by scooting back, you will have less tension. So go ahead and scoot back a little bit to show the audience. There you go. So by moving back a little bit, you are now working with against less tension. That is the magic of Legree. That is the magic of the Mega, the magic of the Evo. Beautiful, right? And that's why I love working with the springs. All right, five more seconds. And then we're gonna keep, uh, we're actually gonna uh, add a red spring to this one. We're gonna go into the tailbone biceps. So bring the carriage all the way in, keep the handles in your hands, and now turn around. We're gonna go into the tailbone biceps. You're gonna sit on your tailbone, feet underneath the strap. You're gonna lean back a little bit, and now keep the elbows aligned with the shoulders. There you go. So for the guys out there, you know, we don't only work on the legs and the inner thighs, right? We do a lot of core exercise. And the core exercise are unparalleled on the Evo and the Mega. You cannot get a better core workout than on those machines. Trust me on that. This one works the abs, same thing, because of the movement of back and forth, but also it works the biceps. So in this one, we integrate the biceps, shoulders, lats, and abs, and quads in that one movement. Uh, different variations to do it, you'll see. Now, on the next one over here, I have to come back to close to the screen. So on the next one, we're gonna do another version of the tailbone biceps. I did not have the animation for this exercise, so the animation is gonna keep playing the same, but Hana is gonna do something different in five, four, Three, stay right there. Two, hold it a few arms. Now, don't move your arms, but open your arms a little bit, though. That's it. Now, don't move your arms. Hold it. Remove your feet from the strap. Balance your body on the tailbone. And from that, from that movement, I want you to move your legs forward and back, but don't change the rest of the body. There you go. So this is a phenomenal exercise. Yes. So we are still working the biceps. Try to keep your wrist straight, though. There you go. That's it and then open your arms a little bit. That's it, good. So working the biceps, and now we are basically working the abs at the same time. We're balancing on the tailbone and then slowly moving the legs forward and back. You can keep your torso at that same angle or as you extend your legs out, you can lean back and as you move your, uh, move your legs forward, you, you can lean forward. There you go, you can do both. There are so many variations of so many exercises on this machine. It's amazing. All right, five more seconds, and then you're gonna keep your feet underneath the strap, and then we're gonna go into an S crunch. In five, four, three, two, drop those handles. Put your hands behind your neck. Tuck your tailbone under. Yes. And then go up and down, beautiful, that's it. So many exercises on the Evo, so many exercises on the Mega, so many exercises on the Micro. I don't have enough time to add all these movements. I am, right? I'm doing on Legree, uh, home.com. Just give me a few years to have literally probably, at the end, probably about six, 700 exercises for each machine. It's uh, the, 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 the library of, uh, of exercise is, uh, is quite big. You can do anything you want on these machines. All right, so 20 more seconds. Work in the abs. Oh, guess what? This is going to be the last one. And then we do a stretch. We do a psoas stretch. Yes. And then you survived it. Hana today taped three workouts. Two 25-minute workouts on the micro and one 15 minute workout on the Evo. I have to give her a lot of credits. Unfortunately for me, my time is uh, very busy, so I have chunks of time to record this session. So when I do it, I try to, to teach as many sessions as possible. And our students, models, uh, have to endure all of this. So she's been working out for basically two and a half hours already. <laughs> Good job. Five, oh, I'm sorry, 27 more seconds. By the way, when you take my classes, I'm the worst counter that's ever lived. So I'm just letting you know. 20 seconds, five seconds, you know, I fell math, so it's just, you know, 
sometimes I don't even know what's coming before or after two or three, and I have to really think about what's coming up next. You know what I mean? Five, four, three, two, one, beautiful. All right, come up, and then we'll do the psoas stretch. For the psoas stretch, we're gonna keep just one black spring, so right foot on the floor, left knee on number three. Yep. And as the stretch, you keep both hands in front of you, just relaxing over here, dropping the shoulders, beautiful. And Hannah did fantastic. Not only she was able to do these three classes, uh, and then she did all three classes, but she was able to keep form, really good form, the entire time. Remember that when you take classes, and not even when you just take classes uh, at one of our studios or licensees or trainer, right? Uh, when you take classes anywhere, you do yoga, you do Pilates, uh, strength training, right? Kickboxing, whatever. Form, form, form. Technique, technique, technique. Always very important. Um, you add weight, you add resistance only once you nail the form. Do not add more resistance when your form is not up to par. And then, of course, we have your welcome little uh, display over here on the avatar. Fantastic. Anna, you did so good. Proud of you, babe. Well done. All right, guys, this was it today. A 50-minute workout on the Evo. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, we have more workout coming every week that we'll post on YouTube for those of you who are too cheap to get a subscription. And, of course, more workouts are posted on the subscription channel. Uh, if you go on LegreeHome.com, you have two portals, one that goes to Legree Home and one that goes to Legreeing at Home. Both sides are fantastic full of videos uh, and then you won't be disappointed and thank you so much if you have any questions you can comment this is going to be posted on YouTube uh, this will be also on agreehome.com um, so if you have any comment questions please let us know any workout that you want us to do if there's a particular format if there's a particular uh, uh, um, uh, uh, combination of body part please let us know and, uh, and then we'll make those videos for you thank you very much I'll see you next time guys Thank <music> you.